Hello, everybody. Welcome to this nutty adventure where you're going to learn how to make nut and seed butters that are compatible with the GAPS nutritional protocol. And nut butter, like you'll see being made today, is itself used as an ingredient in our stage three GAPS pancakes. That's kind of the first introduction that we have of nuts or seeds within the GAPS protocol. And I want to make sure that that's kind of clear for people up front, because I know I get a lot of questions in general about how to include nuts and nut butters. Um, Nikisa is also going to be sharing other recipes that will incorporate nut butters, seed butters, and those are going to be more full gaps options. So the other question that comes up is, can I just be eating nut butters off the spoon in gaps intro? And that's actually something that's a full gaps um, option. So we bring nuts properly prepared, nuts and seeds in stage three as a nut butter, and then we graduate through uh, into nut flowers made into things, and then full gaps, we may have a handful of properly prepared nuts or seeds, or that, you know, spoonful or spread of nut seed butter. So just wanted to kind of state that up front. Um, how do I know these things? Well, I'm Jennifer Scribner. I um, am from Body Wisdom Nutrition hosting this, and I'm a functional nutritional therapy practitioner. And I've been a GAPS practitioner since 2011. And that's been what I specialize in. So that's basically my whole private practice is around the GAPS protocol. So something I know inside and out. And I've invited Nikisa from Love Maman Superfoods here to share her expertise as the creator of a line of nut and seed butters that fit GAPS principles, which she came to know herself through implementing the GAPS protocol with her own son several years ago. And in addition to the demo, Nikisa and I are going to answer questions from you. You can type them into the chat or you can raise your hand and I'll kind of monitor those areas as Nikisa is doing our demo. And then she's going to be our go-to for the recipes, techniques, suppliers, uh, that type of thing. Like she understands like the molecular biology of these things. <laughs> I'm here if there are more questions specific to how you might incorporate these foods into the GAPS protocol. So I'll chime in on those ones, but we won't be answering any personal health questions. So keep it general or keep it to how might I use this? Or if you have a specific concern or condition that you have within GAPS and you want to know how nut or seed products can fit in, I can definitely answer something like that, but not all the details of your, of your situation, at least here. So Nikisa is really passionate about promoting the concept of food as medicine, and she loves to educate families uh, about real healthy living. She has a master's degree in biochemistry and a doctorate degree in the field of cell and molecular biology. So um, she's a whole other level of knowledge about this topic because of that. Then she conducted basic scientific research for 13 years, and then she switched over to teaching college, and she teaches anatomy and physiology since 2007. But because of her extensive academic and professional background, she's really able to extract the nutritional research information and distinguish between kind of real and fake science and determine how the claims that are made regarding different nutritional benefits on food are really true or not, and what that means physiologically for us. And that's something that means a lot to me as something who wants to get into the details of how things will be beneficial or harmful to the gut and how that relates to the physiology of humans and the way that humans eat, because I believe there is a right way, and that is to feed our physiology, to feed ourselves. And so that's why I'm excited to share somebody like Nikisa um, today. So she's going to demonstrate how to make a stage three uh, sunflower butter, and it's going to include ghee and honey, and I want to say cinnamon, cinnamon and something else too, which I'm forgetting offhand, <laughs> but she's going to walk through the ingredients the preparation, why there's added fat when we do a, a GAPS diet specific butter, and then how this process makes a gut friendly nut or seed butter. And so I'm going to turn it over to you, Nikisa, if you want to add anything else about your background or just dive into today's demo. So thanks for joining. Thank you, Jen. Um, so one thing I want to say, um, we did GAPS diet in 2015, and we were on the diet for two years, and we saw tremendous improvement in both my boys. We had um, tummy aches, constant tummy aches, 
we had um, joint pains, we had eczema. Uh, of course, we had some developmental delays and all of those, um, you know, everything improved. After the first week being on GAPS diet, we were we started with a stage one. And after the first week, um, all of these tummy aches, joint pains, and our pediatrician was sending us to asthma allergies. No asthma allergy attack after the first week. It's amazing that our asthma allergies told me he didn't know I was teaching anatomy physiology. So he is explaining to me, so you understand that GI, when I'm explaining to him, I'm doing this gap diet. You don't, you don't understand that GI is a different organ system, that the respiratory system, you understand? And I said, uh, yes, I do understand. And we're still doing it. Oh, don't waste your time. You Don't waste your money. It's not going to work. And I was spending $300 per month on my asthma allergy medications. And... I mean, it's been since 2015, we haven't refilled our prescription. <laughs> so I want to tell you guys that GAPS diet definitely works. And I've been giving um, Dr. Natasha's book to lots of people and almost everyone gets huge results. And one thing I want to tell you guys, you definitely need to work with a practitioner um, because I originally, I started working with a pediatrician who was training gaps, but she's never done it herself. She couldn't guide us. So we switched to a practitioner and we got like moved forward and then we started seeing beautiful results. So definitely working with a practitioner is my, I highly recommend from my experience. So um, how I got into this was because back then, 2015, I had to make everything myself. So when I got, we are now Western A Price Foundation, Dietary Recommendation Followers. So um, now I wanna give back. So I wanna give people a little bit spare time from kitchen. So that's how I developed this. So today I'm going to make one of them that I make for my business. You can kind of use the same principle, make all of them. You don't have to purchase anything. You just can listen and do it. And I will share with you what vendors I like. Like Jen, I have very high standards and in my family, people say, is this Nakisa approved? Is this Nakisa approved? So I'm going to show you what's Nakisa approved. Uh, if you want to purchase these, if not, then just use something similar. You don't have to purchase again from my vendors. But let's get started. Um, I'm going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing right here. So it's easier. Is this a good angle, Jen? Uh, maybe go a little bit towards you so we can see the whole um, kind of uh -huh. like placemat space that you have. It's a little pull back. Yeah, that looks good there. This is good? Yeah, I think we're going to see everything there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So what we need to get started, you know, any measuring cups. Um, I don't use plastic. I like everything glass. But any measuring cup you have, if you have a weight is good you don't have a weight no big deal i am very minimalist i um <laughs> you know i don't want to buy all these gadgets if you don't have it you don't have it we work with it. um i'm going to just tell you the vendors that i use uh, for my business and i've been using these these people for i mean nine ten years this is blue mountain organics and I usually try to find um, either local or small family owner, um, business owner. So this one is a very small family business owner in Virginia, Blue Mountain Organic. What they sell, they sell activated, sprouted, and stone ground, sunflower butter, or any other nut butter that we have. So why is it important that we prepare 
our nut butter, our uh, seed butter properly. We want to activate them. We want to soak them, remove the anti-nutrients. They have a lot of phytic acid because the seed, the plant is smart, doesn't want the seed to be eaten. And so they want the seed to be sprouting to another plant. So what we do, we soak it, then we sprout it. So we're going to increase the nutrient density of the seed getting ready to revert. After that, instead of the fast meal that kills the enzymatic activity, we want to use a slow process. We want to do stone grounding. And this way you keep the enzymatic activity alive. What happens here, this is going to help with the digestion. And this is not going to be harsh on our digestive system. Also, because we have removed the anti-nutrients, we can absorb the minerals easier. So I highly recommend uh, something like this. Again, Blue Mountain Organics is my vendor. There are other vendors you can search for, but I would search for sprouted stone ground nut butter or seed butter. So that's one of them. I like, again, another small family farms. This is the B that we use, it's called spring sunset or sunrise, spring sunrise. And this ghee, the one that I use for home use is a cultured ghee. The reason I use cultured ghee because when you culture the uh, ferment, the clarified butter, you increase the butyric acid. Again, it's another gut food for your uh, enterocytes, for your gut lining, and also um, you increase because of the fermented bacteria and through fermentation, these bacteria are going to increase the vitamin K12. So your fat soluble vitamins are higher in the cultured one. Again, just the regular ghee will work as well. For my products, for my line, I use just the regular ghee, but this is for home use. So if you decide to buy this one, this is a very good company. I actually didn't know that was the brand that you were using, Nikisa. That's the brand I use at home too. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And the honey, I do I do buy local, my honey. This is from a desert farm that it's wild desert plants uh, or flowers that create this. Um, I'm not sure if you can find this in your uh, area. So I would suggest Glory Bee. Glory B, um, the 10% of the proceed goes back to saving the bees. And as you know, we need bees to be alive <laughs> because we need them for pollination. So pollination and, and uh, rebirth of the earth. So basically, um, uh, if you go to uh, Glory B, their honey is great. You want to make sure when you are looking for honey, you want to make sure it's raw and it's unfiltered. Why is it why is it important? When you pasteurize your honey, what you buy in the market, basically it's just sugar and water. You want it to have the active enzymes, you want it to have the pollen. The pollen in itself also has nutritional value and also helps with seasonal allergies. So it has antimicrobial properties. It has, it, it helps with also digestion. So I would go again, if you're doing Glory B, I would look for raw unfiltered. And then um, the mix that I use it, this one, you can buy it from Amazon, but any golden milk blend would work, but you want it to have Turmeric, and it might be too small to see. You want it to have turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, and a little bit of black pepper. A little bit of black pepper helps with the, the uh, absorption of turmeric. Turmeric, ginger, as you know, they have anti-inflammatory properties, and you want to have, you want to make sure you buy the spices in small batches. You want to make sure your spices are not irradiated they're not fumigated with chemicals and you want it to be steamed and dried or in the dehydrator and in small batches so they, they haven't been set in on shelf for so long so the medicinal property is alive in these uh, products 
Okay, so very simple, and you could do all of these at home just by yourself. You just take, um, and I can send Jen the protocol or the, the recipe, or you can just write it down. You want, um, I usually never make one, um, I guess one serving, one jar. So the amount of the spices, you just have to use a pinch of it for this purpose. But basically you take your, you take your ghee and just use about quarter cup. Okay, if you have a, a scale, uh, I can give you the scale, but if you don't have it, it's fine. Okay, so you do one quarter cup of your ghee. Then I'm going to put a pinch of this. You really need 0.1 gram. 0.1 gram is like, I don't know, one, uh, one over 64, one sixty-fourth of the teaspoon. Um, so just a pinch, very small amount, okay? You just want a very small amount and this is really, will do it, okay? I'm gonna just mix this. Okay, and then after you have a uniform look, then I'm gonna take my honey and you want, you remember I said quarter cup of ghee. Now we want half of that. So we want about uh, uh, one eighth of a cup. So I'm gonna use so does that one measure out as like one and a half tablespoons or? Sure, one? sure. Okay, sure. I'll do the, yeah. I'm writing the recipe down as we go too. So I'll. I have it in all notes. in the gram. Uh, in the, yeah. See, I realize some people might not have a scale. So I have everything in gram. I'll send you both. Okay. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't have the scale. So I want to make sure I can translate like it I too. Said, any, it, you know, we can do this without even a measuring cup. All, all you do, you do, and I, I will explain that later. Okay, basically you just added your honey. Again, you mix it. I'm all about making it practical for everyone, Jen. We don't need all these gadgets in the kitchen. Just the bowl and the ingredients would do. Okay, after you mix this nicely, then you want one cup of your sunflower. This one says eight ounce. So that's one exactly one cup. So again, I don't, if I didn't have a scale, I don't have to worry about it. And then you just pour it in. So um, in the cold season, okay, um, you might need to warm up your ghee a little bit, and that's okay. Just warm it up a little bit. I would not warm up my honey. Ayurvedic medicine, they don't um, allow heating uh, honey because they say when you heat honey, it actually becomes toxic. So I would heat my ghee a little bit and then I will add the honey to the heated heat but I would not heat um, the honey itself okay and you just mix everything and guess what you guys that's it you see how easy and you just all you do you just pour it back you could use the same, I mean, of course, wash it and use the same uh, jar. Just pour it back. 
or um, I'm all about um, saving and reducing and reusing. So I kind of save my old jars and you can just use this as well. And because you have a little bit left, you could just use any jar, any mason jar, reuse them and all that. So that's it. Your food is ready. It's as simple as that. And I want to show you how we actually make recipes out of these three. So I want Can to I ask you, you a couple of questions. Oh, yeah, okay, yes, we're yes. on the same page. <laughs> I have a couple of questions. If anyone else has questions, if you want to pop them in the chat or you want to raise a hand or unmute yourself, we'll ask those too. But I'm also seeing this for the first time. So what my question is, first of all, see, this could be done with any of if you're using the Blue Mountain Organics, kind of like sprouted stone ground. So you can start with any jar of that. So that could be a pecan or whatever nut or seed might work for a person that they sell. Yeah. And then it's just kind of changing up the ingredients to, to make them more either flavorful or functional. And I'll ask you questions about the versions that you make as well. So I really like this idea because it's like, sort of homemade but not everything has to be perfectly homemade and you can really get that variety that I feel like sometimes I want especially if I'm going to make a snacking type of nut or seed butter and I don't always want it to be really plain it literally never occurred to me to mix anything in if I wasn't making everything from scratch so to me this is kind of like a hybrid idea <laughs> yeah. um and then uh, did you ever make this from scratch, like the entirety of it when you were doing gaps with your kids, like where you soak the nuts and seeds yourself and all that stuff too? Yeah, Boy. that's that's how we <laughs> did it and added the ghee and everything from the very beginning. And it's part of why to this day, I don't eat a lot of nut and seed butters because when I'm making them myself, it's like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Back then. But it's so much more delicious having the ghee. It never, literally never occurred to me to start with a pre-made, properly prepared, and add my own ghee. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, honestly, Blue Mountain Organic, it's you, anything, any different variety of nuts and seeds you want, they have everything sprouted so ground for you. I mean, why would you want to do it? I have a dehydrator. I did everything by myself. I know how hard it is. Why do I... I mean, it's not only Blue Mountain Organics. There is another one, uh, Living... Do you know which one I'm talking about? Living, uh... anyways, there is a couple of them. There's a and and as I'm as we I'm going to all these food seminars, I'm seeing more and more uh, vendors are now offering sprouted, but sprouted and stone ground. I've only seen just a few. Uh, one being blue mountain. Yeah, I've seen one other small brand. I can't think of the name offhand at our local co-op, and they only have a couple Sprout? kinds. Is um, it Living Sprout or something like that? I can't remember the name of the other. Living Spoonful. Does, uh, does that sound right? No, but do they have a, Griffin, Do they have a sprouted and sura? Maybe. I'm not uh, sure, but I, I've heard that brand. I'll have to okay. look. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you search in for sprouted stone ground, or first two sprouted nuts, that's what I would start with. Oh, and the, then Destiny from there, was the one that I was thinking of. Which I'm one? Not, Destiny? Destiny. I'm not okay, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. but Destiny yes, is one. one. Destiny is one. The reason I didn't go with them because they are more expensive. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the quality, honestly, because I bought them, you know, this is 2015. I bought them. They were just one of the very few people who had these. Um, they're just more expensive. And the other thing, Destiny, a lot of time they add, they have um, other things added. I wanted just the plain nut butter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and Philosopher Foods, that's the other one I've seen. I had to do a search. These things bother me if I don't know the answers. <laughs> what is and it I, called? Philosopher. Yes, I, Philosopher. Yeah. Very good company. Yes. Very good company. Yes, absolutely. And they just have a few brands or a few varieties. Few, 
it, they, they started almond, with I almond think. butter. And I, yeah. They, they started with almond butter. They are adding. They They're are, adding. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very clean products. Yes. Okay. So thanks. Yeah, that's a couple different options that people can use in making these Absolutely. things. Yeah. And let's yeah. see. Okay, so we have something in the chat. Oh, yeah. So Tara's asking, can you guys explain sprouted versus stone ground and what those terms mean? Yeah. So basically, what happens in most of the conventional nut butter that we see, they just take the nuts, either they uh, put them in the oven and they, they roast them. Then they fast mill with a very quick, um, high heat process. They actually make your nut butter for you. Um, in this sprouted and stone ground version, what we do first, we have to soak our nuts and seeds. When we soak our nuts and seeds, we get rid of the anti-nutrients like phytic acid is very high and that, uh, kind of prevents the body from um, absorbing the minerals and absorbing the nutrients. So we just first get rid of that. Then we sprout them. So basically we make this nut and this seed ready for rebirth. When you make it ready for rebirth, what's gonna happen? The nutrient density goes higher. So now you have a nutrient dense, dense nut that is raw, still has active enzymes in it. And now instead of, you know, the roasted one, now we're gonna stone ground it very gently without increasing the heat, without killing all the enzymes, the enzymatic activity remains intact. Why enzymatic activity is important? Because we wanna, a superfood, if you don't absorb it, if you don't take it in, it's not a superfood. It passes right through. So we want to be able to absorb it with these enzymatic activities. It's going to help us with the digestion as well. And question on my end, if I'm making something like this and at home, I don't have a stone grinding machine. <laughs> I would put it in my food processor. I did. If I'm doing that in a small batch. Is that kind of in between snow yes it definitely generates some heat but i'm assuming that what they're doing commercially is going to be a lot like faster higher temp than me putting it in you know my own food processor so is that kind of like in the middle or is that heat getting exactly. too high uh, no no okay. i that's totally fine a problem with the commercial one like you're saying is because it's a huge quantity they have to do this very quick and that's what uh, generates the heat. So for us at home, it's fine. When I was doing it, everything from scratch, I use my processor also. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, so that will retain those similar benefits. It's just when it's on a large scale that that makes a difference. Okay, yeah, that's helpful for me. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions questions um pop up at the moment so if you want to move on and share a couple of your kind yeah. of easy recipes and your yeah, kid friendly these, stuff these too are... that's another thing i always see you demonstrating is like okay kids do it themselves and also things that can go in lunch boxes and how do we keep this simple which is something that's I think we're all whole, looking for that, exactly that's the whole idea um you know i i teach at college and i see these kids walking in with Kit Kat, with Skittles, well, all these junk snacks. And, and I always pull them aside and I say, why can't you bring just a small and clean snack from home? And they say, oh, because I don't have anything. I don't know how to cook. I say, you don't have to know how to cook. Just get enough butter from anywhere, any store. Get enough butter, get honey, get a little bit of um, uh, butter, and just make your own sandwich, bring it to you. Uh, and I'm, oh, that's simple. So I'm going to show you guys how simple it is. <laughs> oh, and another oh. question popped up about why the ghee, why you're adding the ghee to these um, or to you gut friendly to gaps. Like why adding ghee? Very good. Um, you, you have a very smart population. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> ghee. Um, there is several um, health benefits for ghee. Ghee is clarified butter that you have removed the allergens. Allergens meaning the proteins 
and in lactose. Okay, so people who have lactose intolerance, so which that's another topic. We can talk about the raw milk and everything, but for now, just make it simple. Um, people who have lactose intolerance, people who have allergy towards the milk protein, the casein, and the whey, because of the preparation of this ghee, you get rid of all of the proteins, all of the um, sugar. So you are left with just the fat. Now the fat, if it is grass fed, if it is um, pasture raised, it's been out in the pasture. And how do I know that? It's the color of it. You don't want it to be white or yellow, you want it to be kind of orangish yellow, right? Because then that, that tells me it has high beta carotene because it's been in the sun and it has high butyric acid. Butyric acid is a gut for the gut lining, for the enterocytes, these cells on the gut lining. It's very, very important, it's a great food. Butyric acid also is a brain food. And when it's grass-fed and pasture-raised, it is also high in omega-3, so it is a brain food. It's very, very important for children. There is a um, components of your cerebral, or of your brain, that connects the two brain hemispheres. It's called corpus callosum. You need a lot of good, healthy fat to make that thicker. A lot of autistic population, unfortunately, this is underdeveloped. So ghee, yes. Why do I use ghee? Because you also want to, in, in byproducts, you also want to slow down that sugar rush, sugar crush, that insulin rush, insulin crush, and that, you know, tired, feeling tired right after eating snack. Uh, what happens when you have a good, fat, good protein from the nut butter, you are slowing down so you have a steady rise in your sugar, steady rise in your insulin. So it is going to, first of all, keep you full much longer. And second of all, it's going to keep you with a focus, with your attention. A lot of children on the spectrum, ADHD and all that, they need to maintain a constant level of blood sugar. So these are the reasons that we use ghee. Yeah, and I'll just add from my perspective as a practitioner that it can be another way to sneak in some more of the healing fats that we're really aiming for within GAPS so that we are getting the butyric acid, that we are getting the fat soluble nutrients that are in something like ghee without feeling like it always is added to you know, another meat or veggie type of meal. So really even boosting that within something that might feel more of a treat or more of a snack, especially for our kids. But we know we're getting a little bit more nutritional density. And I'll also say that upon gut testing within my client population, butyric acid is often really low in people. And I find that yeah. association where, you know, people think, oh, we need to eat fiber because that's how it's going to be made in the gut. But I often find it in people who have been dairy free or avoiding a lot of dairy, especially too. And so they're not even getting this again as this, the source that can come in that the body doesn't have to do a bunch of things to make it, to transform it. I'm all about how do we provide that direct nutrition specifically, rather than requiring our body to go through all of these transformations to make it. Um, so that's what, yeah, that's just another thing that I've kind of seen clinically. Um, and then Gretchen's asking, do you also get butyric acid in butter alone? Absolutely. Yes. However, again, it's more concentrated in ghee, but absolutely butter is as good as ghee if you can tolerate it. That one of the reasons that I sometimes use the cultured ghee is because also your butyric acid is even higher mm. in the cultured ghee compared to the regular ghee. And so if somebody wanted to just use butter versus ghee Absolutely. in their nut butter recipe, like that would work, right? Absolutely works. Okay. Absolutely okay. works. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. I've and never I done that either. But... You, right? <laughs> At the end, I have a trick for you guys. So... How about you just take your 
nut butter, hopefully sprouted stone ground nut butter. You just take your uh, gaps friendly um, bread and just spread your nut butter, spread your butter on top and put your honey on top. Mm. That's it. You don't yeah. need anyone. You don't <laughs> even need to be in the kitchen. <laughs> to just layer it. Okay. I like that idea. That's very accessible. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. So let's get to some recipes then, and we'll come back sure. for more questions too. I'm going to move again so you can see what I'm doing. Is, is that the angle is good or no? A little bit back towards you. Back towards me. There. Let's now? See. Yes. Great. Okay. So let me clean up a little bit here. All right. So there are three flavors that I have. One flavor we already explored together. And now I'm going to go over this one. This one is called almond ghee and it has cacao goji berries. Now cacao is important to be raw, uh, uh, raw non-alkalized to keep the polyphenol intact, which is antioxidant. Goji berries. I have customers come to me and they say, I have goji berries uh, allergies. I said, no, you don't have goji berries allergies. You have allergies towards the sulfur that they dry the goji berries in. So it's important the goji berries you look for, it's important that is sun dried. Okay. A lot of times they add sulfur to keep that um, uh, red color, the, the color intact, but you don't need, your body doesn't need this so far. It's okay if it's a little darker color. So uh, this one again, almond ghee with uh, cacao goji berries. This one is sweetened with raw unfiltered honey. So I have some, I made some Gaps bagels yesterday and uh, we just cut them in half. And do you see my poster? You see. Okay. And then I'm just going to put it in here for a little bit to toast. And then while this is happening, we can talk about the next one. The next one is pistachio ghee with cardamom rosemary. This one also sweetened with raw unfiltered honey. The Spices and um, plants and any dried dried uh, plants and spices that you use, you want to make sure that it is non-irradiated. It says that on the bottom. It's non-irradiated. It's non-fumigated with the um, with the chemicals. And you want to um, just look um, basically for small batches. Because if, you, if it's been sitting on shelf for too long, then they don't have the medicinal properties. Cardamom and rosemary, they both have antimicrobial properties. And I can say it uh, with confidence that this has antimicrobial properties because I know where I get my spices from. Um, I'm going to get one of them out because I don't want to keep everyone waiting. So this is how the texture looks like for the almond ghee. And so all you do, you just take your bread and just spread it around. And you also can explore you know how I added cacao goji berries? You could explore with many different other spices add to it. Um, you could add, for example, blueberry, dried blueberries. You could add, uh, I don't know, instead of cacao, you add something else like um, coconut shreds. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm, what I'm adding. Then you just want to add some Fruits, any fruits would work. Berries, fruits, anything you want. And then that's your, that's ready. 
Man. So this one's actually almond, it's almond flour. Where it's a very simple bagel that I made. Almond flour, eggs, ghee, and um, what's the fourth one? Uh, almond flour, eggs, ghee, and I forgot the, the fourth one. It's a very simple uh, protocol. Are you putting squash in those ones or something else for texture? No. Oh, okay. No. Somebody is already asking for bagel recipe. So sure. <laughs> we'll, sure. we'll, I'll we'll circle you, back I'll to that. Do okay. another session. I'll show it to you. It's okay. Very yeah. I've never made a gaps bagel. So that's intriguing to me as well. <laughs> it's easy and quick and be, being on gaps for two years taught me a lot. So, okay. So this two by you guys are not here. So you could actually have a bite. <laughs> that's my biggest regret is not trying these things in person, but I like this, especially because you're going to feel like you're getting more of a treat, but when you're using the gaps bagel, you've got the ghee that's already in, implemented within the spread yeah. that you're using. Again, it's kind of, to me, thinking about especially kids and snack kind of things, there, yeah. there's a lot more functional food in this versus the, well, I'm just going to, you know, go off of gaps and have a treat here and there. It's like, again, a way to kind of find a middle ground where you get to have a little bit of that treat without either going off of gaps or blowing up your blood sugar. Yeah. And and the nice thing about these recipes, any child can make it. And I do serve um, autistic population, even children, neurodivergent children, they make their own lunch. They make their own snack. It's so simple. They just come and they take the, the jar, the, any any bread they have at home, they just make a spread. They don't have to even bother to put anything on top and, and it's ready. And those of you who have read my book from Mac and Cheese to Veggies, Please about overcoming picky eating, getting kids involved in preparing their own yeah. food and preparing stuff in the kitchen is something that I really advocate because it's a lot less likely that we're going to be picky when we have some skin in the game and we have some agency over being part of the food preparations too. So yeah. I'm very much in favor of learn, you know, that as part of a process versus always feeling like we have a servant <laughs> as a child, yes. um, because it's a life skill to at least be able to prepare food and know some of these things too. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So I had a question about the cardamom rosemary. So you said, make sure that they're non-irradiated, non-fumigated. Will it say that on yeah. the bottle? And is that like a type of I mean, labeling I, that is that is um that somebody's checking on like is that a, a standard that is specifically checked for or is that just on the honor of the company that's saying it no it actually says on the bottom uh if you guys do you guys have whole foods there we do in my area yeah i don't go there very often because it's a little far from me but we do have that okay so um Whole Foods, uh, what is the what is their uh, brand at three sixty five? Mm -hmm. I think three sixty five. Their brand, Whole Foods brand, has it actually stated. It's non irradiated. It's not fumigated. Okay, so if it's like the they have like the spice jars that would be three sixty five, then um, and that would be like a, a trusted brand so far. Yeah, let me just make sure that I. Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, let me just find another one. This is, oh yeah, it, it does say, yeah. Okay, for example, this is the brand that I use. And uh, where was it? Can you see? Um, oh yeah, not treated with irradiation, ethylene oxide or propylene oxide. Okay, I don't even know what those other two are, so. I may have been buying things that have been treated with that without realizing it. So, um, okay, I'm not saying everybody who doesn't say it, um, they Is treat doing them. It. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just careful. That's all. Yeah. And this is something, even if it doesn't say it on the bottle, maybe we can look on a website or inquire yeah, further yeah, if we're really wanting. Yeah. And, and this kind of thing for me is like finding a source. And then yes, things can change over time. Of course, companies 
change hands and whatnot. Yeah. But in general, when you can find a trusted supplier, then you don't have to keep, you know, revisiting that every single time, which is why it's nice to have kind of your sources figured out, which takes a little bit when you're getting started on in the gaps world. Yeah. And Pinch is a good company also. Let me bring Pinch. you that one. Pinch. Yeah. <laughs> So I buy my kind of like, you can buy also your spices from there. Mm -hmm. This Can you read? Yeah. Okay. So Pinch, Pinch Spice Market. Okay. I haven't heard yeah. of that one. So that one, uh, that one you could buy kind of like seasoning like this, or mm -hmm. you could buy it just by itself as well. Okay. Yeah. And then um, Gretchen's asking if organic implies that it's non-irradiated. I think that's what she's referring um, to. Uh, I am not sure, but I would assume it sh they should not irradiate organic. But okay. I just to be on the safe side, I always buy the ones that stay, they state it at least on their bottle. I'm going to check, double check on that because I know that that's not necessarily the case with fruits and vegetables that are coming from abroad that are labeled organic, like for instance, things imported from Mexico. So um, I'm going to see if I can find any information on yeah. that and I can put it in our follow up to this call too, because that's, right. yeah, I would like to, I like to know every little detail. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then we have another question. I think Miriam um, is how it's pronounced. I thought that fruit is better to eat separately or do you not have to follow this so closely? Um, like fruit eating separate from other meals. That I'm, that's how I'm gonna take the question. You can chime in Miriam if you have, if that's not what you meant. Um, to me, it depends on how your digestion works. And so this is something that I kind of leave up to the person. Fruit typically will digest quite quickly when it is on its own. But for some people, especially with strong digestion, having some fruit with a meal, they don't feel any type of difference or any type of you know bloating or gut disruption, in which case I say, honor your body. That's kind of been my take on it when I've looked into that. There's some kind of you know traditional beliefs about it, but I defer to people's lived experiences in their bodies with, with that pack of question. Okay. All right. So we're going to do another recipe demo. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, okay. So the second one, we're going to use the pistachio ghee with cardamom rosemary. This one sweetened with raw unfiltered honey. So for that, we're going to make a tortilla sandwich, tortilla cheese sandwich. So I have jicama tortilla. Uh, this one, I bought it from Whole Foods Market. Hopefully you can find it in your neighborhood or um, any gaps allowed. I mean, coconut wraps is also good or any, I, mean, I don't know, Jen, what do you suggest for as far as the tortilla goes? What kind of tortilla we can uh, replace for this one? I haven't ever had the jicama tortilla. That's something new to me. So I'm oh. curious about that. I per, I love jicama in general, but I haven't been introduced to that. So that's a good idea. And it's, then there are uh, the coconut wraps as well that are just made with coconut. And I recently saw one, I can't think of the brand. It, I was on a trip and that one was made with, I think somehow it was like a sprouted ground nuts that they... But that one also seemed gaps friendly, but I don't know how that one would taste. And then for people who are making things at home, you could also look at the Heal Your Gut Cookbook, which has the coconut flour tortillas. Those are really good, but that requires making something at home. But you can always make up a batch of those and kind of keep them in the freezer. They'll probably turn out a little thicker than these ones, um, but they're also delicious. So I'm curious about the jicama and like how that how the flavor would pair. It, 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 jicama has a mild flavor. Mm -hmm. I mean, the jicama tortillas, and it's kind of like crispy. Mm. It's not, like I said, too bad that uh, you, you're not here. I know. Try this. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I might have to go to Whole Foods or see if they have that at a local grocery store. It's yours. Yeah, yeah, maybe. 
Okay, so the cheese, um, I like this company. This is, they have A2A2 milk, which the casein is less, it's um, tolerable, more tolerable, less irritant. And they, um, they, I don't know where they're based, but basically um, their product is very, very clean. They're 100% uh, grass-fed, 100% grass-finished. Um, the company's name is uh, uh, Simply Grass-Fed, but I don't see it here. <clears throat> Simply Grass-Fed, okay. Yeah, that's the name that's of the company. That's probably like a website. Yeah. Okay, I haven't tried right. that either. Sure. Yeah, very clean, very clean company. I was at um, Wise Tradition this past weekend and basically um, they were there and they had all these beautiful samples. Mm, um, yeah, I wish you get the best samples at that conference. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> the taste was amazing. <laughs> okay, so we just slice our cheese any way we want, any way we want. And then we, what I did, I just heated my tortilla a little bit, my jicama a little bit in the, not too much. You don't want to toast it, just heat it a little bit, just so it's, um, the crispy uh, is left so you can roll it. Oh, because that and makes then, it more pliable. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And <laughs> this is the texture of the pistachio ghee. You just take as much or as little as you want. I like to be generous because I like the taste of this. Is by the way, my most popular one and is my number one to go to. I always, everything, all the recipes I make, I use this. Being Persian, we love pistachio. Okay, so then that's after my this, favorite. Not like yeah. not butter that you make as well. And I was really surprised. I mean, I like pistachio, but I don't like love pistachio. <laughs> uh -huh. And I it sounded a little odd to me with the combination, but that's ended up being my favorite, just as a little side <laughs> note. If people haven't tried it, like it was the last of I got the sampler from you and I tried that one last because I was like, I don't know, that sounds a little <laughs> weird. And then it's that's the one that I buy most often. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Anyway, so you just put your um, cheese sticks, I guess, and you start from one end and roll over your cheese until you get to the end. And you have your tortilla sandwich there. It looks like this. Wait, I, I don't hear you. So is this something that oh. you've seen people do as a um, snack or also as a lunch box type of thing? Cause this seems yeah. more dense having the cheese in there as well. Yeah, I, I do this one for my kids' lunch box. Okay. Yeah. I actually haven't seen people doing do it, but maybe and now that I showed the recipe, more people do it. <laughs> yeah, not a combination I would have thought of. So I'm intrigued yeah. to try that one too. Yeah, and a lot of people go off of the jar. And most most of my customers, they just either put it just on the toast or just go off of the jar. Yeah, they don't that's, make recipes. that's me. I've mixed a little <laughs> with a raw ice cream once, but for the most part, I'm like, I'm just going to have a spoon. That's about the level that I've been at. So that's part of my <laughs> curiosity in these other recipes. <laughs> Any questions for... The pistachio ghee, either one, pistachio ghee or almond ghee or any part of the recipe. Um, I have another question. I love this because yes. I feel like I get to selfishly have all my questions answered. So the cacao <laughs> that you're using, you're saying raw and unalkalized. Is yeah. that is that in many brands or are there specific brands that you recommend for that? Uh, I buy mine from Blue Mountain Organics again, but oh, okay. um, I'm... And by the way, I'm not affiliated with Blue Mountain Organics. I'm just loving them because they are very clean company. But okay. um, any you could if you buy from Amazon, if you search, it, it, there is many many companies. For that one, you don't have to be um, bound to one particular company. If you search for uh, raw non-alkalized, bunch will show up on the Amazon. Okay. 
And can yeah. you explain again the alkalized versus the non-alkalized? What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. So when you alkalize it, you actually get rid of the uh, polyphenol. Polyphenol okay. is the antioxidant property that you want your cacao to have. Because the whole idea is food is medicine. The whole idea is every ingredient counts. There are, as I said, I do um, serve autistic population. Uh, the, this population, for them, every bite counts. Mm -hmm. You can't underestimate the power of food because I've seen it with my children. And I will tell you one story. Um, my father-in-law had to go to the hospital. When he came back, he couldn't eat any food. He couldn't swallow any food. So my mother-in-law, what, what she was doing, she was taking this, this one, the almond ghee. He loves cacao. He loves anything chocolatey. Uh, almond ghee, she, she would put a teaspoon or then increase to tablespoon into like put a teaspoon of it, full of it in his mouth. And he would just say, close your mouth. And that's, he sustained just with this for like two days until he started, he, he was able to eat even soup. So, so mm. every bite for some people, every bite counts. So we don't want to just put something in our body. Every, every meal, every food, every ingredient has an energy and can add something to ourselves or take something away from ourselves. Great. Yeah. And that's how I describe gaps too. I say it's all additive because people will have the attitude like, oh no, I messed up or I went off the rails and I had non-gaps foods. Have I blown everything? And for me, it's like, we're looking at feeding the cells with nutrition. So that is an additive process. Maybe you didn't do that for one meal. That doesn't blow everything. It's like getting back on track and recognizing that we have that choice every time we're eating, even yeah. if we don't do it perfectly, it's all going to make a difference in time. And that's what we're looking at is the the majority of the choices and the, the tra trajectory that we're following with our choices being more and more nutrient dense. True. Very true. Yeah. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions pop up. All right, let's move on. So this is the one that we made together. Well, it's not the one, but this is the sunflower ghee that we made together. So let's see what we can do with this one. Um, a very simple, you know, I used to make my own um, homemade, this is not homemade, but I used to make my own homemade raw ice cream and it was yellow because I was using uh, raw egg yolk, which was beautiful and it tasted great. And I was using raw cream. Maybe one day, Jen, we can do that one again, the, the ice cream. But yeah. this one, I would say if you don't have time to cook, if Jen approves it, um, I would, uh, this is what I use. This is the uh, company I use uh, for if you don't have time to make your own raw um, ice cream. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right Do you approve this one, Jen? Well, it not for gaps because it does include cane sugar, but that's the closest to homemade that I've found. I do buy that kind myself sometimes. I usually make my own raw because uh, I have raw cream in the summer and I add extra egg yolks and all that too because yes. I like it a little bit more fatty. But as far as a mainstream ice cream goes, that is the closest to homemade that I've found, especially in a larger brand, that Strauss brand. So, and I know that they're also that, Brand and vanilla specifically is also approved on the Western Price um, yeah. food buying guide too. Yeah, and and um, the nice thing about them, unfortunately, some of their creams I I noticed they're they're starting to ultra pasteurize. But the nice thing about them, they only pasteurize at least not un, un, until recently. They only pasteurize. They don't homogenize. And they yeah. don't offer pasteurized. But unfortunately, last time I was at the market, I saw ultra pasteurized cream from Strauss. So I've heard that but, that's becoming more common. I'm not quite yeah. sure why, but amongst organic, for some reason, that they are doing ultra pasteurization. I don't know if it's a some type of 
guideline that's gone into effect or if it's more about the it shelf stability it, yeah it keeps it on the shelf longer so, not good but, for you but yeah. yeah of course within gaps our priority is always raw and i know that's not legal or very accessible everywhere but it's really worth getting especially if people have had dairy issues in the past it's a completely different experience in your body uh, when we're talking about nutrition and vitality and all those things, and it can take right. some doing to, depending on where you are, to be organized and find those sources. Nikisa is in California where raw products are legal for sale at the stores, which I'm always oh, jealous yeah. of. Here in Oregon, I have to buy direct from a farm and go to a pickup and like, you know, be part of a cow share. And it's, it's a patchwork of things everywhere in the U.S. Yeah, we have, I mean, I opened my fridge. <laughs> You don't have to worry about where to find it. I mean, any any store you can find. So it. convenient. <laughs> I mean, not any store. I have to uh, correct myself. Uh, Mothers, Sprouts, Lazy Acres here, they have it. Like, easy to find. Easy mm -hmm. to find. Yeah. 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 Okay. I want to show you this one. This one, you could make it two different ways. One, you put this in the fridge. This is the one that we made together. You could either put it in the fridge so it is kind of like solid because remember we have ghee in this, we have honey in this, so immediately in the fridge, they're going to be solid. So when they're solid, when you go with your uh, with your uh, ice cream spoon, when it comes out, it forms a very nice um, a ball, half ball. But right now we didn't put it in the fridge, so that's fine. We could We could use it just like that. And then you can kind of decorate it with any fruits you have. If you don't want fruits, uh, just like that is fine. And then bananas. Bananas is important. I mean, any fruits. It's important to be ripe because you want to reduce, again, the anti-nutrients in ripe um, in unripe uh, bananas, they are very high in anti-nutrients. So, and also as the nutrient density, as the, uh, as the fruit gets ripe, um, also the amount of starch, it gets sweeter, the amount of starch is reduced. So it's easier also for the body to digest it. So this is your ice cream, with some flour butter and ghee and some fruits. A bit of ice cream sundae there. Yeah. Ice okay. cream sundae, yes. Yeah. And I'll concur about the fruit thing. So Dr. Natasha recommends as much as possible, very ripe local fruit so that the full nutritional profile has been developed and that the starches are converted into easier to digest sugars. That's just going to be easier for the gut to assimilate as well. And then with any of our plant foods, if we're getting them as ripe as possible, which generally means from as close to us as possible, we're going to have the full you know, spectrum of nutrients available. And we're also going to have a lessening of potential anti-nutrients or plant toxins that you hear a lot about these days as well. And so that's a way to... Um, balance that and I think eat in a more historical fashion because people really did eat ripe fresh food when they were eating these plants and had less problems with plants causing inflammation because of that as well as eating them in a season in addition yeah. um okay so Tara is asking what's better fresh local farm fruit and veg or organic from whole foods I would say fresh local I and mean, organic or if they maybe they don't have an organic certification, but you can ask them about the practices that they're using and find out that they, you know, if they're meeting your standards. But often, if it is organic or non organic but local, even if they may spray occasionally, it's going to be much less than something that's from far away, of course. And then see how it feels in your body. I'm always going to defer to that too. If you're eating something local and maybe it wasn't quite organic and you really notice, you know, some subtle shift, maybe it is better in that case for a time to buy something that's organic that, you know, comes to a place like Whole Foods, but then also looking at, you know, where that food was in season and maybe how far that comes. Cause even a place like Whole Foods may be sourcing local depending on where they are. So at least things that are 
regional to you. And you'll, especially as you do that more, you'll feel that difference in your body. And there's things like to me that are just less appealing. Like I'll eat strawberries locally or from my yard, but I don't even want to have a strawberry out of season because it just doesn't have the strawberriness. <laughs> um, and so that's something that can develop over time too. And when you have a a healed gut, a healthy, robust gut, I think eating as much as possible from your region is the most useful thing to do. But it's not always possible when we need to go through that deep healing phase. And we need to focus more on specific foods to get us there. And, and if I may add, um, a few things about grocery store, organic grocery store versus local. Um, the grocery store, just because they do mass um, product, not production, but mass purchase, they usually have to do it very much unripened. So they actually let it ripen on the bench, <laughs> on the on the shelf, as opposed to if you buy from your local store, uh, local farmer's market, they actually, they're pretty fresh. In the grocery store, they could be there for weeks or months left there and and as Jen was saying it's best to ripen on the tree by itself so it gets all the required nutrients and also eating locally is very important because our gut microbiome loves the microbiome from our local source that we live in so that also works much better and I, I'm 100% in agreement with Jen that you listen to your body. However, um, your body, your gut microbiome is better friends with local soil microbiome than some coming from Mexico or another um, con um, state or another country. Yeah. And then the other thing I'll touch on that people might have questions about is the use of the new um, fruit and vegetable coating called appeal, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. a manufactured substance that can't be removed from the outer um, portion of food. And that is something that Whole Foods is embracing. And so there's questions to whether how the body will process that the fact that it can't be removed. So that's something that I'm feeling cautious of. I'm always cautious of that kind of food additive. And so being able to purchase local or maybe from a smaller local market will often avoid that. There are different, um, you know, small chains or small stores that said that they aren't going to carry food that has that. Um, Azure Standard has said that as well. So if you get food dropped from them, from local or regional farms, that won't be a factor there too. Yeah, very good. Exactly. All right. Anybody else have any question before we wrap up today? Thanks for hanging in for this whole conversation and demonstration. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Carol. Carol says this was amazing. Um, and Thank then you. if it's okay with you, Nikisa, I would like to share my um, affiliate discount code that I have with you. Yes, <laughs> Yeah. So if anybody yes, wants yes. to purchase directly from Love Maman, then um, the website is lovemaman.com, M-A-M-A-N, Farsi word for mother. <laughs> And you can use the code BWN15, so like body wisdom nutrition, 15, for 15% 15 off your first order if you do want to try her pre-made stuff versus making your own, or you can do both. I'm kind of inspired to try some other things too, um, but I but this is the brand that I buy and keep on hand too for myself and Mr. Body Wisdom. So happy to share that with you if y'all are interested in that too. Nikisa, I tried the three pack and it was so fun to get the sampler. I try, I opened them all. I can't wait. Wonderful. Like, Jen. Jen says Wonderful. she waited. Which one did you like? Which I one did you like the best? The sunflower. And I was so surprised. Um, they're all good. But I think <laughs> if you order, you've got to get the three packs so you know exactly what you want. Exactly. And yeah. I just love that you're making all this from pre-mades, essentially, because it just like lifts, it elevates what you can do. Yeah. And have all the options. And I just, it's just wonderful. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you, Gretchen. Yeah, thanks, Gretchen. I know it's funny. It's like I honestly didn't know that that was how exactly what Nikisa was even going to show. I didn't know if it was going to be all the way from scratch. Like, so I'm like, oh, this is kind of a revelation for me to think of as well. <laughs> and, and the thing is, now you have the, the possibilities endless, you guys, right? Mm -hmm. You could just take any nut butter, sprouted nut butter that you like, and just create your own mix, right? You don't need to buy anything from anyone, or you just get your bread and put it, layer it on top of each other. Still is the same. Yeah, and just the idea of using different herbs or spices, or like you said, Absolutely. instead of goji berries, if you wanted to use a different dried berry, like that, you know, opening up a little bit of that creativity, and especially like that's a process you could do with your kids, for example. Um, I don't know why, like when you say it, it sounds so simple, but it's just not something that had occurred to me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's simple. And honestly, like Jen said, when, when you get your children involved, they will want to eat it and they will finish it. They are, they, my children in one sitting, they finish this. I mean, but of course, you know, they're used to this for many, many years, but, but the children, if they make it themselves, they're gonna, they're gonna love it. They're gonna finish it. And it's so nourishing. Every ingredient is there to promote health at the cellular level. So I would highly recommend for every child to get uh, busy making this uh, at home and, and just making their own lunch. Yeah. And a last note for me is it's not just for gaps. For me, this is beyond gaps as well, because this type yeah. of preparation method is what is helps things be more digestible and more nutrient dense. So it's applicable to everybody. The fact that we've had industrialized nut and seed butters that are just based on raw things that are roasted and ground up at high heat and all of that stuff. That's for the convenience of industry. That's not for the health of human physiology. And for yeah. me, I want to see a movement of everybody moving towards truly nourishing themselves, allowing their bodies to rebuild in a really strong way because of what that unlocks with our, just our human potential in general. So for me, especially as somebody, it's been a dozen years since I started GAPS and I still eat a lot of GAPS foods, but not entirely, but I've stuck with this type of quality and always keep my eye towards digestibility and nutritional density as a way yeah. to keep myself in the most vital space. So it's definitely beyond just GAPS, even though that's what we're presenting today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any, any superfood, you want to make sure that you are able to digest it because it doesn't matter how much they say superfood, superfood. If, if it go, goes right through, you haven't really got the benefit of it, right? And the other problem with the superfood industry these days is there's a lot of lies even just penetrated into the superfood industry. So we have to be careful. Is it really a superfood? Is it really going to add something to my body or, or is just the marketing? Yeah, because superfood isn't a regulated out. term. You know, there's not like a standard of exactly what that means. And so being discerning exactly. about that is important. Exactly. True, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Nikisa. I really thank appreciate you. what you've shared with us, what you've demonstrated, and I'm going to gather up um, the recipes and mm -hmm. how things were made. And I'll do a write up and share that with everybody as well. So we can, um, yeah, make sure we have that in that form going forward too. Yes. Wonderful. This was really fun. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for joining everybody. Thanks for your great questions too. Um, we all benefit by hearing other people's questions. And yes, thank health. you everyone. All yeah. Right. All right. Bye. Bye.